Hey team, in this week's exercise, we are gonna paint this lovely, moody, misty landscape with a little bit of reflections going on in the water. It's really nice and relaxing, and the trick to this is to make sure we don't go too dark in the background, and we make sure everything is nice and juicy and wet on the foreground. So grab your paints and let's get started. Before we start, I just wanna remind you, you can get extra content, download, all the exercise sheets if you head on over to Patreon for just three pounds a month. If you don't want to do that, at least like and subscribe. That would be a great help. Thank you. So the first thing we want to do is tape down our artwork. So I like to recycle my tape. It has two sides to, not two sides, it's got a top and a bottom. Um, so if I use it for one painting, I'll use it for another. Unless it gets all tangled up and messed up and maybe not. There's a lot of hair attached on mine now. I put it on the side to save it, but no, it's all hairy. Oh well, we will still use it. And final piece. Let's get rid of this. <laughs> yeah. All right, there we go. Okay, so our painting is gonna look so nice and delicate today. So once you've taped it, we're gonna start with our outline. So let's figure out our horizon first. It kind of is in two parts. So let's figure out our horizon. If this is halfway, it's a little bit too high because we wanna have some mountains on the top and we want the space for the trees. So I like to find halfway roughly and then just come down a little bit and then we will just draw a horizontal line that goes a fair way across. And the reason why I know it's horizontal is because I'm comparing to the edge of the paper. So I'll do one on the right and then I'll do one on the left. And the reason why they're not touching is because I'm actually gonna have a bit of a tree here and I will have another tree up here. And we'll go across and there'll be another tree there and then another tree here. So I won't draw the uh, leaves just yet, there's no need. Um, and then I'll work backwards and I'll just think about what's happening behind. So it's a bit of a bush, we'll put a tree there, tree there, and then we'll go across again. So you see I'm not pushing too hard with the pencil and being quite delicate with it. As we go further back, this has to be even lighter. So I'm starting on the right, I'm gonna go down a little peak and then down again and just let that pencil disappear. And then I'm gonna do a bigger peak, cross down and then down again there. So we have four, five layers essentially. I've got the water, I've got some trees, some more trees and then two mountains. So let's find our colors um, and we'll start with the background. Okay, so I like to just use scrap pieces of paper to test my colors. You see that there's a fish on here. <laughs> And all I want to do is try and mix a bit of a aquary green and I'm doing it very very light Sometimes if you have loads of light paint on your brush, it can actually look quite dark But if I just scrape away some of the excess paint and paint it, you'll see it's actually much lighter So I need to make sure my load of my brush isn't too much I'm actually gonna add a little bit more water and just try and scrape off any excess just to see that again and that is more the consistency that I'm looking for. Much lighter and we need to work quite quick with the next step. So I want to try and get the edge of this mountain and then blend that down with clean water. So I'm, I'm doing wet on dry, which means my paper's dry, my paintbrush is wet. And it's going to try and dry very, very quickly. So I don't need to be a perfectionist about it. I literally just need to get it on and then quickly pick up some water and then bring that down the edge and then pick up some more clean water and then bring that down again. So that is gonna have a little gradient that goes down and just be a little bit more interesting. Now, if you wanna add any speckles or anything interesting, you can always go back in whilst it's damp and just try and dabble a little bit of color or texture in there. So with a slightly thicker paint um, and literally just let it do its thing. But you do have to work quick 
before it starts to dry. And then as soon as it's drying, you either need to add more water or just let it dry and kind of give it um, another chance in a second. So I'm really happy with that, actually. I think the timing was right to have um, paint the edge, blend it down, and then go back in with a bit more pigment at the top. I think it also worked really well. So I'm going to let that dry to make sure there's no bleeding along the edge of my next layers. So just give it a couple of minutes and it will be ready to go again. Okay, so let's test if it's dry. Does it feel damp? Is it coming off on your finger? Okay, if it's the same temperature as your paper, we're ready to go. If it's not coming off on your finger, then um, it's ready to go. So our next color, I want to introduce a slightly warmer color. So I'm adding a little bit, oops, a little bit of this yellow ochre. And let me just test that on my scrap. Thank you, Chip. <laughs> so it's a nice, slightly greener one. And we're going to do the same thing again. So I'm just going to fucking go for it. Get that across there. And then quickly wash and clean my brush. Bring this water down. And then pick up a little bit of the color just along the edge. And allow that do its thing. I think now the dog is rolling around, which you could probably, yeah, it sounds very weird. Um, actually, that just needs to blend that there. Okay, fab. So once again, let that dry, and then we'll do the next layer. Now we can actually skip this one, skip this one whilst it's drying, and let's do some of the water. So I want the painting to have a bit of a color gradient as we move across, and we're gonna have a bit of a blur as we move down as well. So it's all about reflections and thinking about what color is above and also it's in water, so can we make it quite soft? So I'm gonna try and make it a little bit damp, not soaking wet. I'm just gonna use a slightly wider brush, with dirty water it looks like. <laughs> and I'm also just gonna try and leave a little bit of a thin white line. Um, and that'll just separate the colors a bit. So let's go across here. Ah, I missed the white line there. Oh well. And let's just get that in. Okie pokey. And there we go. Actually, no, you need to go all the way. All right, fabulous. So this side, obviously, we added a bit of the yellow ochre and a touch of the green, and it is a touch of the blue as well, but as so long as we can see that yellow ochre coming through. Um, it's not as light, so it's a little bit darker. This is actually a bit too dark, so I know I can add a bit more water, and that should be good to go. So first of all, let's just go across, because this is going to be a dark pigment, so I know I want to reflect that. And if you want, you can add little... <laughs> Why did I do that? I was going to say, you can add little touches of colour to change it if you want. Um, but we're going to try and get the rough shape of the reflections that we can see above us. And then as I move left, I want to add a little bit more blue. You see that transition? Because it's damp, it's nice and easy to transition. And this is going to have some of these trees that we haven't quite done yet. But I might actually just... Add a bit more of the green and the blue to give it a bit of zhuzh and go. Should we add a bit of black? Tiny, tiny, tiny bit of black. Uh, just to spice it up a bit. I think this needs to be a bit darker. Uh, I just got rid of the white. <laughs> Don't do that. Do as I say, not as I do. No, I could just leave the white on the other bit. So let's pop that back in. Okay, good. Oh, this is a little bit harsh. Cool. And whilst we're there, actually, I may as well just add a little bit of colouring here. It's pretty much dried on mine. Um, so I'll just reignite the water. Let me spread that across. So let's let that dry. Uh, and then we're going to do these two here. All right, so let's paint this strip because my mountains are dry and my lake is dry, but I'm trying to leave that gap anyway, so that doesn't matter so much. Um, but I want to get this yellow ochre, uh, a little bit of blue. Ooh, that actually looks really gross. <laughs> Let's get that green, pop some more yellow ochre in it, and more water. It's very thick at the moment. If yours has turned thick like mine, take it to one side and tell it off. Um, <laughs> 
that'd be funny. All right, so let's, uh, we're going wet on dry. So I wanna be fairly rough at the top and rather controlled at the bottom, uh, just to get that juxtaposition of like foresty, um, but still a horizon. So again, you have to work quite quick um, in order to get everything nice and smooth. And as you travel across, you can always add a little bit more green or a little bit more yellow ochre. We wanna get some differences in the textures and the paints. And then we can add a tree, kind of. Uh, <laughs> and let's move across. And then maybe I'll add a bit more ochre just to zhuzh it up. Nice, I like that. I like that very much. Do that again, a bit more ochre. I'll change it again. And I don't want to paint on top of the, um, the layer ahead of me, so I'll just be mindful of that. Okay, beautiful. Um, so let that dry, it shouldn't take too long, and we could do our final layer here. Okay, so let's start on the final section. This one, I'm gonna pop this here. I want it to be a nice, rich, dark blue. And on the right side, I will start with more of a greeny blue. And then as I move across, we'll get into a richer um, blacky blue. So test it first. Feeling good, then let's go. So remember, we want to leave that little, uh, the light bit. And get a few little, oh, that's such a lush color. Okay, and then let's get this. Spark, bark, not spark, sound like spark, didn't it? Uh, and then we could do some tree bits. So as I get down, the tree sections are gonna be a little bit wider. Um, there's no real tech, oh, there is a technique to it, but that's really patronizing. Um, trying to kind of get this angular pointiness to it um, will really help. I'll, I'll slow that down on the next one and show you better that was a terrible example China so let's start with that bark again the trunk maybe it's the trunk okay so we're not looking for perfect edges I've got this like scumbly motion going on and then as I move down you see it kind of swings I'm painting from the top and I'm kind of moving from left to right trying to get wider as I reach towards the bottom could join that as quick as possible and then I'm going to introduce a little bit of black in that color combination to get a slightly different tone. There we go. And then let's just head our way up here. There is another tree back there. And then let's do that same again. So smaller scumbles on the top as we move down. Let that get wider. Okay, lush, lush. Um, weird. <laughs> so you have a choice now. If this is dry, you could go over it again a little bit more just to add some darker tones. So I'm very tempted to, so I'm gonna do it. I, I'm gonna add a bit of wet, clean water first. So really spread that over. And I'm just picking up that color directly and I'm gonna dab that along the bottom primarily. Definitely make sure we add that bit. And then I just wanna kind of Bring that up as if it's the trees, basically. And that obviously goes all the way down, these two. And then just a little bit there. And then I'll just let that dry. Um, and actually, I could probably do a tiny bit on this side. Water's getting a little bit dirty. So if you find your water's a tiny bit dirty, just spread that all over so at least it won't dry and stand out. Okay, so this was the yellow ochre and the dark green. So the main thing for this, again, is just getting it a bit darker near the edge, but then just trying to get these little mounds, most importantly. Good, oh, that's gonna look so good. Um, fab, all right, let that dry and we'll peel it off together and we will have a look at it. That oh, is okay, gorgeous. Okay, so always pull it away from you, just in case it rips. I wouldn't really have 
smidge. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Maybe there's that. Oh, we do have a bit of edge on the trees. Lush. And the final one. So there we have it. A lovely, moody, misty landscape <laughs> with a little bit of reflections and hopefully not too technical and nice and relaxing to paint. So well done. Uh, congratulations and I'll see you next time for another video.